Welcome to the third video on quirks in JavaScript. Let's talk about automatic semicolon insertion. What is it and what does it do? So let's start with a simple example here. If I have, for example, a, a variable, let's call it a equals uh, five plus 10, right? Simple enough. And here I'm just gonna console log my a, right? But as you'll notice, I'm omitting the semicolons. So would you expect this code to actually break and not compile or not actually well, execute in the case of JavaScript? Well, if I run this, you'll notice I get the expected results. I get 15, but why is that? Why do I not need to actually add semicolons to this code? Well, that's because of automatic semicolon insertion in JavaScript. Basically what JavaScript says is, well, at the end of every line, if you don't have a semicolon, simply add one so that the interpreter can continue executing well properly the statement. Um, but there are some caveats to this. Otherwise, everybody would be probably using this. So what are the caveats? Now let's take a look a little bit deeper at how um, JavaScript adds the semicolon into our code automatically. So here, for example, we can break this parser by doing the following. Let's declare here a variable that we're gonna just equal to, for example, four. And then we're gonna declare another one. So let's say a equals five plus c. Okay, so no extra spaces, just simple uh, mathematics. And now after it, I want to actually do something a bit strange. I want to concatenate two strings, something like, um, let's say test and uh, our other variable. Okay, and I want to cast it to uppercase. Okay, so now if I run this, you'll notice I get a very peculiar error. I get C is not a function, <laughs> even though I used C here um, at the end of the line. Can you, can you take a moment to guess why, why would it consider that C is a function and give me an error that C is not a function when I'm running the code. You might have noticed that here at the, the first, the first token, not really the first character, but the first token of the next line is actually an open parenthesis. What does that mean? That can mean multiple things. Usually for me, I'm using this to group um, operations, right? I'm just I just want to group the test and the C uh, variable so that I can get a new string. But if I don't add a semicolon here, it's going to automatically consider it a valid statement. Why? Because what the parser does is looks at the end token and looks at the first token of the next line and says, okay, does this, does this statement make sense or this one? No, then I'm going to add a semicolon, right? Okay. And same thing goes for the next line. It goes, does this statement make sense? Well, it actually can make sense because C can be a function that you can call here. And yeah, that, that totally makes sense, right? Other than the fact that C is a number. So what the interpreter does is simply just concatenates these two because there's no, there's no reason to add a semicolon here. This, this structure is actually valid and just kind of add a semicolon. Remember, this is like before executing the code. This is when we are creating the grammar so that we know it's actually valid, um, a valid line of code that you can actually execute, not just some uh, garbage statement that doesn't make any sense, right? If I just do something like this, this doesn't make any sense for the uh, JavaScript compiler or JavaScript interpreter, okay? So it's another thing that you have to be careful with when you're not using semicolons. Just make sure that you don't open a parenthesis at a new line. Usually that doesn't happen. My example, really, I'm not doing anything with this string, so it doesn't really make sense, but there are some cases and it might really drive you crazy if you find these issues in your code. Well, let's try something different this time. So I'm gonna have here a function. Let's call it uh, fun for 
just because I don't have any imagination. And I'm going to return here an object that has, let's say, the a value property that has the actual value a. And I'll just, I'm not going to add any sort of semicolons. And I'm also going to indent this code because it looks a bit better this way. And I'm going to just call this function, right? Simple enough. Um, and console log its result. So if I run this, you'll notice I get the proper object here. I get uh, the object with the property value and its value is 15, right? That makes sense. So this works. We don't have any issues. Now, what if, what if, for example, I add a, a new line here, what's going to happen? If I run this, you'll notice I get undefined. Why? That's a bit of a tricky question. Basically, there are a few exceptions to um, automatic semicolon insertion, where when you have certain keywords, it's going to automatically add a semicolon after it. When and which are those keywords? Those key so here I listed all the keywords after which automatic semicolon occurs, right? Basically, if you have a return and then you have a new line character, the automatic semicolon uh, procedure is going to add a semicolon right at the end of the return. Thus, returning undefined in this example. In practice, you don't see continue and break with their optional parameter, which is a label to continue to. So those kind of are never seen in the wild. The throw one, well, usually use uh, throw something like this. So that basically never happens, right? Yield, uh, basically the same thing as return. So that could happen if you insert an enter before the open brackets. Arrow functions are a bit more vulnerable, but usually don't uh, create an arrow functions without the open brackets that spans multiple lines, right? So that doesn't really happen. And the increments and decrements, that's usually never seen. All right, so you just have to make sure you don't um, add a new line after the return if you're not using semicolons in your code. So that's all there is to it. JavaScript really allows you to not use semicolons, at least not all the time. There are some cases where you actually have to use them, but most of the time you don't have to use them. It's going to automatically add them for you. And it's, the algorithm is fairly smart, except for just these two uh, really edge cases and some other that are, you don't usually encounter in the real world, okay? Just here <laughs> in uh, when we're just practicing by ourselves, okay? So I hope this made you understand why the code runs even though you've omitted a semicolon, right? This is the reason why you really shouldn't omit semicolons if you're always or most of the time using them. But if you don't use them, make sure you don't forget about these exceptions. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave questions in the comments down below and see you guys next time. Bye.